to the Polycystic Life of Babies. It's me, Bianca, and I'm back here with an update for y'all, um, you know, from my surgery. Um, if you're new, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Um, I don't really have many followers, so anyone that wants to follow and just kind of follow um, my journey through this endometriosis and PCOS fight, um, welcome welcome. So, um, I'm here to give you a one week update. It's been exactly one week and a day exactly since I had my surgery last, uh, December 11th and I'm feeling great. Honestly, you guys, I feel amazing. I obviously am not completely healed yet. Um, still having a little bit of like dizzy spells every now and then, and then I am still not really driving, um, but I know that after two weeks I can drive, so I'm going to ask the doctor. I'm, I haven't really had um, much of a dizzy spell in the last day, so I think I'm going to ask him if I can drive. I should have done that today at my follow-up, but eh, oh well, I didn't. So <laughs> I'm back to give you that update. Like I said, I'm feeling good, and I don't feel a lot of um, the symptoms anymore. Obviously, I had it. I had a DNC and... Uh, polypectomies and I have the endometriosis removal. So obviously I'm going to have a little bit of cramping um, down in, in the female area. But other than that, I feel amazing, you guys. I feel, and after my follow-up today, um, my boyfriend and I, we just, sorry, I thought I saw a spider. My boyfriend and I, we just got back from my follow-up and I just feel so much better and I feel so optimistic and I just, I'm happy. I'm so happy. So, we went to my follow-up with my, my wonderful Dr. Ramirez today. Um, Dathan took off to take me because he's just a wonderful boyfriend like that. And um, we went and Dathan got sat in the room with me and we basically went over everything with the doctor. And he told us about my prognosis and he said the surgery went absolutely amazingly. Um, he said that he was able to pretty much remove all of the endometriosis and he said um, that as far as stages go, there's uh, four different stages, one, two, three, and four, obviously, and I'm at a, I was at a stage two. And so he said that he went in there and he was able to use the firefly technique that I told you guys about in um, one of the other videos. I can't remember exactly which video, but it's basically in the video going over the process and the surgery that he did on me. So, um, he said that he did use the firefly technique on me, which, uh, enables him to identify and excise way more endometriosis than he normally would have in a regular laparoscopy. Um, and I also had the da Vinci, so it was, um, very minimally invasive, but, you know, obviously it's still a recovery, it's still a surgery, and they still went into my uterus like a regular, um, hysteroscopy that wasn't done by the da Vinci machine, so, um, he did all that manually, but he was able to remove all the polyps. Um, pathology is great. Pathology came back, and I have no cancer, nothing like that. Um, it literally would just was uterine polyps, exactly what we thought it was. And um, what else? That's pretty much it. So the pathology is great. Yay for good pathology. I'm so happy about that. And um, he said that in regards to the actual surgery itself, like I said, he was able to remove a lot of the endometriosis, pretty much all of it. Uh, polyps removed easily, and the, the, uterine, the uterine lining that was thick, he scraped that out. So I've got a fresh new um, uterus, just as it was prior to those polyps growing. And that thickening of the lining because of the extra estrogen from the PCOS. Um, he did an ovarian drilling for me. And uh, basically the ovarian drilling is where he took the, the ovaries and he basically drilled little holes into the ovary to essentially pop the little cysts. They don't need popping, but what it does is it, it like frees up your ovary space and it basically comes, it kind of puts it back into uh, a mode of functioning as it would have functioned before you, you know, have the PCOS basically. Um, and it allows me to ovulate easier, even though I'm a girl that does have her menstrual um, cycles normally and about every um, 30 to 35 days which is kind of abnormal but what I mean in nor as a normal as I'm having it every month without without doubt um, I never skip or miss a, a period so um, basically he told me that even though you're having your menstrual periods you may not necessarily ovulate and so with that you're um, producing a ton of estrogen without the 
um, leveling out of that hormone estrogen with progesterone. And so um, hopefully this will cause me to ovulate every single month and I won't have any issues, but we'll see how that works. So he did all that. He checked my fallopian tubes. He said they're absolutely beautiful. They're great. They're working and flowing amazingly, he said. There was no issues there. So um, in the future, as far as fertility is concerned, my fallopian tubes would have no bit in that fight at all. Um, he said that unless, you know, something else obviously were to occur or to happen, I would not have any issues with my um, tubal factor type of infertility. And he said just because, you know, you have those issues doesn't necessarily mean you're infertile. You don't know that you're infertile until you actually start trying to have kids, which, um, you know, Dathan and I have not started trying or anything like that. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit further into the the video, but we haven't actively been trying or started to try or anything like that. This all started because of my pain levels. With the pain levels came the scare of the PCOS and the endometriosis, and of course with that came the worries about fertility because, you know, we both want kids. Obviously, we're more than willing to um, adopt, obviously, if anything were to have been that severe, but... Um, you know, we want to have our own kids and we want to have our own family and we do plan on starting that. Um, and like I said, I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But um, as far as the surgery girls, it, girls, guys, whoever's watching, it went amazingly and they told me that um, tubes and the ovaries and everything are fine. Obviously, I have polycystic ovaries, but you know, that's treatable with medicines when it does come time to have kids if I even need it. He said, you know, because I have normal menstrual cycles, I may not even need it, especially now that I've had the ovarian drilling. Um, also, with the endometriosis, that can grow back as well, but that's not um, at the level, it's not any type of a factor in, in regards to causing me any type of infertility. Um, the endometriosis implants were not necessarily on the ovaries a lot. I had a lot of bowel endometriosis and it's crazy because I knew I had that, like, in my head. Like, I knew it because I kept, like, all these years, um, I've been having these issues where during the menstrual cycles when it comes time to um, pass gas, I would be in, like, this extreme pain and I'd get these shooting pains into the uterus and, like, behind the uterus. In my head, it's behind the uterus, but back up. And, like, there's been plenty of nights where... God bless his soul. Dathan has just been holding me because it hurts so bad. Like trying to toot. You can't toot. It hurts. And this, obviously now, it I can see why. I had endometriosis and had no clue. And I had a lot of it on the bowel, the doctor said, and in the deeper pelvic cavity. That's where most of my endometriosis was growing. So let's hope it kind of stays that way if it does decide to grow back. Um, there are a couple options as far as treating me to help them not grow back. Um, I'm sure if some of you have endo, you've heard of the Lupron shot, um, which I'm pretty well against. I don't want it. And my doctor said it was an option and it is known. He knows it. He's an endometriosis specialist, so he knows it to work for endometriosis patients, but he does not necessarily suggest it to me. That would definitely be a plan B. Um, there is another medicine he suggested, and it's actually like a pill form that you take. And basically, it does almost the same thing as the Lupron shot, but just not as severe. Um, with this pill I'd be taking, I would still be basically a normal menstruating woman. So it wouldn't be like putting me into a full, like, temporary menopause, medically induced menopause is what the Lupron would do. The pill he's suggesting and wants me to start um, is not like that at all. I would still have a menstrual period. I would still ovulate every single month. Um, as long as the ovaries are not being butt heads and the polycystic ovaries is not affecting that. Um, so it would just basically kind of control it a little bit more for me, but I would still pretty well, um, be like normal kind of. And that's my whole thing. Like, I don't want to be crazy. I don't want to be a Lupron monster. Like I've heard all these different stories and a very, very close friend of mine, um, and other people that I know personally that aren't as close have told me about this shot and I've heard nothing but horrible things about the Lupron shot. So I'm just going to kind of kick back on that and I am willing to try the pill because he said the main thing is just keeping the implants and anything from regrowing and keeping that endometriosis calm. He said that with the shot or with the pill, he cannot allow me to take it any more than two years. And that's where the um, questioning about children came in because 
Um, Dathan and I make it pretty clear that we want kids, but obviously, you know, it is what it is. Life is what it is. So hopefully it'll happen that way. But, um, he basically said that he doesn't foresee me having any issues with having kids, but this will keep the endometriosis calm to where I won't have to have another laparoscopy between now and having children and it'll stay where it is. Um, and he, that's my whole thing. Cause I want to finish this last uh, semester of school. I'll be finishing with my degree in May with my first degree. And then I'll be applying to hopefully some accelerated nursing programs. So, um, the doctor said, basically you're still pretty young. Um, and of course school's important and we want you to finish, but we don't want you to wait too long. He's like, I don't want you waiting until after 35 to just start trying. You need to start trying. You don't have to start trying in six months from now. You don't have to start trying a year from now. But you do need to in the near future. Um, and so Dathan and I, and I talked about that after the appointment. And we decided that um, we probably would be at that next step in our life and would want to try um, like right around when I would turn 32. I'm 30 and a half-ish now. And so that gives us about a year and a half um, that gives us time for me to get through this last semester and get my health science degree and hopefully start applying to some programs and see what happens and some nursing programs and see what happens. Or if that doesn't work out, we're thinking of, I'm thinking about um, the next best thing, which is going to be my, um, my master's in something that I'm very, very passionate about, such as public health. Um, and there's some other things too, which that's for another video. And also that gives Dave then time to finish his, um, engineering, uh, you know, degree in, in taking his, his test and becoming actually licensed because he's actually, um, pretty, he's pretty much doing it. It's just, he's, uh, and he works for, uh, you know, that's what he does for a living, but you know, he's just got to finish that last little part of it. And so it's, he's going to be, um, restarting this next fall. And he probably has about a year left um, as long as everything goes as planned. So he's pretty much, oh, he's good. Nathan's good to go. I'm the one that's going to be kind of lagging a little bit because of the nursing thing. Um, just because that's such a daunting kind of issue when it comes to applying to a nursing program. Um, just because everything's so badly impacted. But we'll get into that in another video. I'm going off on a completely different subject. So everything went great, and we decided that we would give ourselves a year and a half before we start trying to start our own family. Um, obviously, we feel things will be at the next step in our relationship by then. Um, oh, that's all in his hands, but I'm very, very, it's going to happen. We're going to be there. So <sighs> once that time hits, then, um, you know, we'll start, you know, baby dancing and see what happens. I'm not going to rush anything. I do need to finish school. I want to finish school first. And as much as I love babies and I think that they are a blessing from God and regardless, you can always make it work. I just think if I have the option to wait now, which I now I know I do, I'm so ecstatic and happy about that. Um, you know, I, I was really scared. He was going to be like, you have stage four and you guys need to start trying like after you're healed in the next six months or else we're giving you a hysterectomy. I, I mean, I was literally thinking the worst of the worst guys, but it's not that case at all. We do have time. He doesn't foresee any of the, the endometriosis implants really growing back and causing me a lot of pain. Um, as long as I take the medicine for at least the next two years. So whew, thank you, God. I'm so happy about that. I'm just so overjoyed. And this has just motivated me to want to just do everything and be better at everything. It's motivating me to want to finish school um, which is odd. You wouldn't think me having the surgery would motivate me to do that, but it has. It's motivated me to want to lose weight because I've gotten a little chunky. Um, I've always been a little chunky, but I'm still cute. But I've gotten a little chunkier, so I need to get some of this weight off. It's motivated me because I know that in the next couple years, we've already decided this, and I'm going to have this to look forward to. I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to be able to look forward to starting my own little family. Like, Dathan and I are already a little family, and obviously we have our big family, our, our parents and our, our siblings and our friends and everybody, but like, like our own little thing, it's motivating me to want to do better because now we've talked about this and we know this is a want and we know that it can happen and it's not, I'm not infertile. I'm not having to have a hysterectomy. Like we were able to catch this issue in time and have it, um, you know, rectified. And so I'm excited about that, and I just want to let any of you girls watching that have endometriosis or have PCOS or have any other issues that, hey, you're not, first of all, 
you're not infertile, okay? You don't know whether or not you're infertile. You still have a great chance of being able to have kids. Even if you have the surgery and your outcome is not as pleasant as the outcome of my surgery. Maybe you have one clogged tube. Know that there's a procedure to reverse that. Know that um, you still have one working tube and you have two working ovaries. Know that you still have the option to have children. Know that if you go to a doctor and you've been suffering from the chronic pain, that he might be able to do something to repair that. Whether it's medicine, whether it is a surgery, um, there may be options out there for you. And it just takes you not being so afraid. I know that a lot of people are so scared. A lot of women, I've realized, are so scared and don't even want to go to the OBGYN, which is scary, and I understand it. I completely understand it. It's daunting. Those are your private parts, and they're having to look and to touch, and you feel a little violated. Um, I don't really get too bothered, but I'm like very free and like, oh yeah, whatever, you know, but I know a lot of people it does and I can completely understand. But what I just want to tell you is just try not to be too scared. Try to, and if you are scared, just try to be uncomfortable for just a few minutes because it could literally be life changing. Like seriously, had I waited, it could have been worse. I could have had a stage three or a stage four. It could have clogged my tubes. It could have caused extensive scar tissue in my uterus. You know, at this point, because I caught it, none of that happened. And I'm I'm okay. Um, and I feel for you girls, like the same for you. If you haven't had the surgery yet or haven't gone to the doctor about your chronic pain yet or you have endometriosis and you've just kind of given up and you're depressed or you're sad, reach out to me. Like seriously, if I'm in the area and you need a friend, like, I'll go to the doctor with you. Like, I'll, I'll send you questions that I ask my doctor. Like, we can get, like, a little transcript going for you to take to the doctor. Hell, I'll video, you know, Zoom you or whatever the heck that's called. I will, um, what is it? Skype you while you're at the doctor. Like, seriously, I know, like, you don't know me, but get to know me. I'm here to help you. And this has just motivated me so much to want to help other women because I know other women are struggling, whether it's you're not, you're not willing and, and afraid to talk about your issues and your pain, or whether it's that you've been to five doctors like I had and nobody's diagnosed you with anything and says your ovaries and everything are completely normal when they're not. So talk to me. Go to the doctor if you have the ability. If not, we can look up different programs and, and different things that we can try to use to help get you to a doctor. And we can try to figure this out together. We'll keep fighting it together. Just know that you're going to be okay. And, uh, you know, if you believe in God, if you believe in Buddha, whoever you believe in, I believe in God, um, pray. Pray to whoever your higher power is. Just have faith. And um, just know that you have support out there. And if you have no one else in the world to support you, reach out to me and I've got you. You know, I, I'll talk to you. I'll, I'll try to help you get through the hard times and through the pain because I know how it feels. I know the anxiety. I know the pain. It's not fun. So anyways, girls, thank you so much. Girls, guys, whoever, thank you so much for watching this and watching my success story. I'm so happy to share it with you. And please feel free to reach out to me. Um, at the end of the video, I'll post a picture of my scars and the name of those two medicines and the one that the doctor suggested for me to try for the endometriosis. Love you all. Mwah.